Hey everybody. Hi and big hi to Priyamvada. And Priyamvada, welcome to another episode of Sunday's Kenna. Thank you so much for accepting my invitation and being here and ready to gossip with me. How are you feeling today? Thank you, Shweta, and wish you a very happy New Year. I am excited, you know, because you're the bubbly girl, the charming bubbly girl. And what better would it be to gossip with this beautiful young lady? <laughs> thank you, thank you. Same to you, because um, if so, everybody, we were just talking about uh, you know that how hot we look. You know, I was telling Priyamvada that you know what, look at you. You you know you don't even look like a mom of a teenager. And then she said the same thing to me, but. I think we all women love to get these compliments and stay young forever. <laughs> yeah, it's only me who can see my grey hair. So, <laughs> Believe that... me, thanks to the camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the filters. <laughs> Absolutely. So, and I think as you said, Happy New Year, wishing you the same. And um, so... Everybody, this is not only, so Priyamvada is a mindfulness coach and, um, you know, I being a mindset coach right now, it's not only a mindfulness coach and a mindset coach talking, but we are also moms of teenagers. And Priyamvada, I wanted to say this, that, you know, Jesse New Year and, um, you know, this year my daughter is in 11th standard. So she's 16 and next year it's uh, decision making time, you know. So another six months or another nine months, um, she'll need to take a decision right now that, you know, which subject specifically she wants to graduate. And it's like I would suggest her, but at the same time, I just want to keep my mouth shut because I want her to choose whatever she wants to do. So this is a confusing stage hota hai because... I always wanted to bring her up um, in a very free atmosphere because I believe that freedom will give you a lot of creativity. And yes, I think we all make mistakes. We all learn lessons. But being a parent, yaar, ye tam mushkil ki hota hai, you know, it's even though right now being on the screen, it's a true story. I want to, you know, I also do a lot of counseling for teenager kids and all. Sometimes it's so easy to tell them, tell parents that give freedom to your kids, you know, don't control them. But Internally, when I am a mom, I go through my struggles. That's a, that's a harsh truth. Yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, you know, when you talk about the new year, I feel that uh, how new is the new year? Yeah. Uh, have we as parents uh, thought about it? You know, that how new is the parenting? And do we really look at parenting as a skill that we need to acquire or... Can we just uh, give up the idea of acquiring something and uh, just think of it as uh, parenthood in terms of a relationship? Yeah. If we can stop thinking about uh, what shall I do next? What is the better way to do it? Or give up the idea that I know better than my child. Yeah. You know, when you say that uh, I want, I have that urge to, you know, suggest my child. Yeah. Uh, my daughter with subjects. So, you know, the... This, the starting point is that we are assuming that we know much better. True. But uh, the it comes out of is, responsibility also, right? Responsibility, but we, you know, our times were different. Yeah. And the kind of preconditioning that we have, mm. we have our own opinions, you know, and we are like quick to judge mm. and jump on to conclusions. You know, my daughter would just come with, say you know she wants to go on a retreat on a you know schools have their school trips mm. and immediately I would you know flow with my opinion and my preconceived notions and I would say no 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 you're too young for it now the stories that I've been carrying how valid are they you know things have moved on things have changed and then look at the two years the painful pandemic two years where the child has really lost absolutely those two golden years no experiences, no school. I think, as you said, life skills have gone for a toss, for sure. No socializing and, you know, just staying and just being before your you know laptops or PC and just, you know, you know, seeing and you can't even touch your friends or can't even hold them, can't even feel that physical energy being around people. So surely gone for a toss. Yeah, so they've missed out on, you know, the, the feel of school, the smell sure. of the classroom. True. The smiles and the vibes and the friends that we made when we were, you know, in a physical school. So two years hmm. has, you know, it's gone away. Yeah. Now, 
when we are starting from zero, let's build on what we have. And, you know, how quickly can we cover the gap? Sure. And if you still keep thinking, you know, the rights and the wrongs, things have changed. Yeah. If there has been a revolution, it has been for the entire world. So why am I sticking on with my old mindset? Hmm. You know, maybe the child really needs to step out now. I'll yes. tell you something, uh, Shweta, it's so painful. Hmm. These children, it's an observation that I have. Hmm. It's so unfortunate that they've been still using the masks, you know, the COVID masks. Mm. And now we are at a stage where these children have found a sense of comfort in hiding behind these masks. Wow. They don't want to remove because mm -hmm. they're habituated. Yeah. And they, you know, they kind of want to hide behind the mask and not show who they really are that, that confidence has dropped you know the confidence of my own being in my own or my skin. face or just you know just watch me as i am yeah and the teachers can't even you know remember the who's who because all that you see is the eyes <laughs> I actually i it's so unfortunate that the teachers can't even interact completely because you can't even see the child is smiling or how are the facial expressions Mm. Everything is so covered. Yeah. And the child has found the comfort in this. True. And then I think it's about showing the true face or it's it's about accepting what you are. And mm. anyways, I think this teenage, as we're talking about being, you know, teenager moms, they already go through a lot because there's a lot of change in hormones and you know, it's a it's a different age, it's a milestone of their life itself. So, anyways, they're going through this, and in this moment, they get to hide their face behind the mask. Oh my God, what has yeah, the pandemic telling, done to them? Yeah, we keep telling, you know, our children yeah. that uh, how to become wonderful. Mm. You know, if we can just remember that they're already wonderful. True. And just give them a reminder that you're wonderful. Absolutely. And, you know, Priyamada, as I said, even though I struggle as a parent with them, I know what is the right thing to do to my kid or even to the other kids. So, Every day what I do is I just remind her that, you know, trust yourself. Whatever you're doing, just trust yourself. If you need any guidance, I'm there for you. But you know what? Sometimes you don't even need me. So it's, I want, I'm just, sometimes when I do that, I'm also telling this to myself that trust your, you know, just trust yourself, Shweta. You're doing a good job as a parent. Just give her love. I think as a parent what the best thing you can do to your kids is about just giving love and you're right it's not about suggesting it's not about choosing the right subjects and of course there were moments you know when she passed from 10 standard to 11 standard there were moments that she's like you know mom I'm confused should I go with the environmental sciences or should I go with the business management so what we did is we did and I said why don't you just go online and do the study a bit but I was there for her but I want her to choose, make her choice. And I know maybe some subject she'll say, you know, after six months, she'll come back and she'll say, maybe she'll say that, you know, I don't think I enjoy this. But and I said, if you can change it, just change it. If you don't enjoy it, you can change it. I think there is nothing right and wrong. It's all about it. Yeah, this is something beautiful that you've shared. And yeah. as a mindfulness coach, uh, we must uh, look at the ripening process, you know, mm -hmm. uh, if you could allow the child to go through yeah. and then grow through what, you know, the child is going through. Yeah. Because this ripening would allow just like a mango is green and then it subtly, you know, in the journey of ripening becomes yellow yeah. and then orange and is from traveling from sour to a little sweeter than to really sweet. Yeah. So if you kind of just conclude and stop the ripening yeah then you are denying certain experiences absolutely and i think then it wouldn't be the most um, you know it, it wouldn't be the fruit with you know it will not be such a healthy fruit that's what i want to say that you know it will not come with i think everything let it be in fact this reminds me of if we go back to our experiences even though we were guided the best of the best by our parents. Okay, when I look, sometimes even today at this stage of my life, there is a reason that I don't want to go back to my mom at times. Because I think we come from an era where 
it was suggested that just do this. In fact, I come from an era where it was told that, you know, being an engineer, being an architect, being a doctor, that's the best profession. So there was not much of exploring, you know, and then when somebody scores good in the 10th standard, you know how it works for them. So I come from that era. But I think there's a lot of conditioning happening, which is already done for us also. And I guess that I don't want to give that condition to my girl. Right. And this is what I like about mindfulness. Mother, it is such a beautiful way to just accept what you are. And there are no conclusions, as you said. There is just a process. And then every whatever you go through, whatever that sculpting happening, whatever that ripening process you mentioned, every process, just observe yourself. And those observations are so beautiful. Yes, and, and of course, the experiences that you can uh, offer, you know, every day, if you can witness and observe that, what new experiences has the child uh, yeah. you've been able to offer, or the child has been able to grab opportunities and travel and live and really dirty, you know, his or hands in the mud. Exactly. You really play with, you play with a situation, you play with an obstacle, you know, how you handle the situation. It's all about experiences, you know, like we talk about Christmas being celebrated here. Yeah. How, you tell me that, you know, when you had a festival back home, when you were young, since you're talking about how things were when you were as a child yeah. and your experiences with mom, tell me, do you really remember what your mom gifted you, you know, in the present? What was there inside that box? No. But you would remember the smell coming from the kitchen that day. Yes. How she cooked it in the festival. Yes. yes. You would so remember... True the smell coming from the kitchen, you would remember those tiny little things, you know. The rangoli, as, as if you say Diwali, my mom used to work hard getting the yes. And you would remember the hugs. Yeah. You know, the warmth that you received or the, so the laugh. together, people coming by, all the relatives, cousins coming over. Yes, of course. And sometimes we even uh, remember the silly jokes that we cracked with our friends. Uh -huh. Because there's so much feel around the whole yeah. thing. So in fact, now that you're saying this, I remember, in fact, I met my mom just to last week and we were just catching over that how we used to love some movies, you know, and then we used to just watch them together. So whenever she used to be free, she has always been a businesswoman for whole of her life. But mm -hmm. whenever she got free, she would love to share that movie, you know, watch Shwetan, let's watch this together. It could be any because I think that time it was all on the cable TVs, you know, whatever <laughs> movies used to come by. It was not Netflix and, you know, all. You uh, didn't but... have the freedom <laughs> of picking onto a movie. Yeah, and today I go on the OTT platform and I just get to watch whatever, right? Yeah. Or pick up a cassette, you know, and have the VCR. Yeah, and oh my God, I'm getting nostalgic right now. Yes. And then because you've got the cassette, you know, you would not even play the, you would not even press the forward button because you've, you know, it's such a treasure living yeah. each minute and each second. And then all those scenes and you would want to relive, you yeah. know, the reliving, uh, just rewind the movie and then reliving it because there's so much uh, with every scene, you know, and each time I used to see the same movie, I used to wonder, Oh, ye to dekha hai tha, pichli bar. Exactly, you don't remember all the details now. Yeah. Ye, ye wala dialogue to mera missy ho gaya. <laughs> so, you know, the newness that I used to find mm. in the same movie yeah. added so much charm. You know, how is it that uh, we love to hear our favorite song n number of times? Why do we not get bored? Exactly. And you don't mind it's singing it again and again, even though it's the same rhythm. Yeah. Because every time you fall in love with it, and every time this love is also new. So if this fall in love and this new love we can give to our teens, you know, in every moment, in every True. situation. True. New, new curiosity. Yeah. You know, when they're, they're picking on a book, now you're, you know, in education system, you're telling the child to revise the same chapter n number of times, you know, especially mm. in board exams, you know, they will say yeah. that only. Questions will to NCRT, se aayenge, NCRT se kar lo. <laughs> yes. bar nahi, bar same chapter. Kar lo. Same uh. questions ko bar bar nikalo. Now, how would the child, you know, not get bored? How would the, because this generation, you know, is so used to overstimulation of the mind. They get bored very fast. Uh. 
they also yeah, like get a lot of variety life. they already get a lot of variety in life right so if they can find that newness mm. in the same subject you know in the same chapter they're doing geometry mm. and every time they do it you know they kind of find a new thing because if they do it with the same newness and same openness of mind mm. they're bound to find a better way of doing the same question or a new skill that they would acquire gradually by doing the same question over and over again yeah. their speeds may get better they may get more accurate with the whole thing they may fall in love with the subject and then of course the concept of practice but then True. if they get bored too fast or if that curiosity goes then you don't fall in love hmm. and as you're seeing this you know mindfulness has this is a beautiful tool as you said that you know they just have to be in that moment because in fact you know my daughter used to say this priyamada that maths is not her favorite subject she used to say that but being in the process and just going through the process in fact now she says that you know what i never realized that i love enjoying you know doing math so much i don't know why she used to say that that you know that also depends on how things are being taught also i believe that you know what kind of teacher or of course and teacher makes a lot of difference you know this is what i've observed um with my daughter or with other kids also every subject if the teacher is favorite the subject becomes favorite the moment teacher changes the subject favorite subject changes you know so but you're right it's about these beautiful mindfulness tools you know if they can just be in the moment and i wish you know the whole culture of the schooling or education changes about then i think nothing will be ever tough right nothing will be tough you know yeah. think of tough if you think of that word most of uh, most of us of hmm. course uh, see i am first a parent and then you know uh i would want to talk as a coach but then we sometimes say that you know i have a difficult child you know if you could just change this so narrative true. and say that i am having a difficult time with my child it's just a phase yes i don't have a difficult child i know we've all been we've all given this music to us this is such a you know this is such a horrendous way to say this i'm having a difficult child and this also reminds me priyam bada so recently in fact just two weeks back i was uh, coaching a teen and that teen is in 12th and he wanted to you know choose a subject so parents came by and they said ashwata you know what i approached them and then this is mindfulness i want to you know it's not only one session but i said let's start with one session it was beautiful to connect with the teenager and you know what was my observation this i would love to share this with you um the kid said then i said what do you like the most he's like no i love to play out sports is my favorite sports is my favorite and and then i said what do you want to do and he's like no you know my parents have suggested me to become an engineer then i said what do you want to do i'm just asking because the whole session was paid by the parents so you i need to understand the balance and i asked but what do you want to do he's like you know what i wish i can just stay with the sports forever and then i said then why don't you because he used to love you know he was playing football i said why don't you do something around that you know how's that you love it you know passion bhi hai or maybe we can dig in more about that what you really like to about it or something like that it could be management it could be actually playing it could be coaching anything and then he said no i don't think i am very good at football i said but you love you're still in the team but he said that no you know i am not playing very good because i see other players playing more good but i was trying to understand that where is this coming from where is this coming from and then that struggle that i want to do football i want to play football and then parents saying that pata nahi football ke isme kuch you know career hoga ki nahi we are in india and football or the sports and all there is no career thing and all that so this was a confusion and i thought if that kid actually just accepts him whatever he is but that is not enough priyamada that is not enough for the kid so as you said it's about let's as a parent stop suggesting or it could be that just you know just be parenthood instead of just parenting or just unparent yourself for a moment just look that you're suggesting this to your best friend or to be your loved one which is whom you love and i think love is about empowering right it's not making that person dependent and this keeps on triggering me and i feel sad about this as a coach i feel i can just adopt all the kids and be that uh, you know whatever parent but i know 
you know, physically, uh, that's not possible. But that was, you know, that is no, something that like a pain yes. point I saw. Mm. Uh, uh, also, I see that, you know, some of us, uh, we've started to look at our children as a project. And then whatever we are doing is like an investment in the project. And we are also seeing the X number of years after which, you know, the project would start reaping me and giving me the benefits. Yeah. And then engineering has become a project. Also, it's so unfortunate that parents are trying to even rub their own unfulfilled desires yes. and trying to fulfill yes. them this round. Absolutely. They could not do it. Yeah. Now they want their children to do it. You know, I it, could become I a doctor. Do so. huh. I didn't do it. to took early. And then you have to score this much because you want to become a doctor or you have to score this much. So not necessary, you know, engineer, engineer not necessary if, you know, I am an you know architect by um, like education and I always see my daughter doing a lot of paintings and all. But I always ask her that, you know, you draw so well, you sketch well, you love drawing. I said, have you ever thought of, you know, maybe you could just go into designing. And she, she extremely, she says, you know what, I want to keep this as a hobby. This de-stresses me for whatever work and projects are back to back. Kuch karti She's very clear on that. And then I said, I tell myself, stop it, Shweta. Don't put seed in her mind, which maybe she doesn't want to. We but, are actually trying to mold the pot. You know, if we can just become the potter's wheel. Yeah. Just give the space, you know, yeah. the rotating wheel. Rest, each pot is new. Every pot is unique. Yeah. But what we are trying to do is we're trying to even mold the pot. Hmm. And then chances are high. It is very likely that the pot that you are going to make will be much similar to your own pot. Exactly. And, and it, then the same your, conditioning follows, right? The same conditioning follows. Yeah. Same conditioning follows. Your gray areas becomes, you know, the, the involuntary, you kind of passing yeah. on your fears, your inhibitions. It's not just the clay or the color or the smell of the clay, you know, the other things also rub on, you know, how soon you can break, how soon can the pot break. Those things are also getting passed on. So if we can just, you know, kind of open the doors and just give the space, just give the space for them to blossom the way they are. And it's you're right, amazing. just adding up here, love is enough. It's enough, right? Also, there is a struggle which I see during, uh, you know, one of these things that they say that my mom used to say this one year back, two years back, but she has changed her opinions, you know, this change of opinions when I do, you know, counseling. So I am just new into this mindfulness for teens and all. It's been not a very uh, something of that I can really, you know, do it well, but it's a very close to my heart stuff. So when whatever I projects, you know, projects I get is... I talk to them and they, many kids say that, you know, my parents change opinions. This is something that the kids struggle with. This is something that say, you know, there are some sections of life where whatever I do is fine. But there are some sections of life where if I take a decision, then that is not the right thing to do because I don't understand or I'm too young to decide. So yeah, this happens. This happens. I'll tell you uh, mm. an interesting example. So I would let my child sleep a little longer. Okay. Why? Because I want to finish my household chores. Yeah, I would want that, you know, if he wakes up, he's little and then the mess would happen. He'll start calling me every five minutes and I'll have to leave the kitchen work or I'll have to, you know, what if I'm on the laptop, then I'll have to kind of leave it, pause my whatever call and then go and then attend and then hand me over this and then things will fall and so let him just sleep, you know, end of story. <laughs> As per my convenience. I believe it's a story of every mom. Yes. Yeah. Now you've done this according to your own convenience. The child has learned how to wake up late in the holidays. Now, next day, you're shouting on your child for waking up late. Yeah. So the parent is changing. You know, this is exactly what you're saying. That we are quivering in our own behavior. Why would the child not be confused? True. Whether I have to wake up late or I have to wake up early. It's, sure. it's like that. 
Yeah, because if I go 10 years back, I have, I'm sure I've also done the same thing. Come on, Priyamada. I think it's like to so jabi. Let me just Beta, have my... you are the one who handed over the phone or the gadget to the child mm. so that the child can hurry up his meal. You know, let the child be engrossed in watching YouTube video while I'll quickly feed God, the I've child. The job is done. Yeah, I've seen this so many in the malls, in the parks I go. And I'm then after kidding. a few years, we're telling the child, why do you need a gadget mm. along with your meal? Yeah. Why are you eating so quickly? Be one with your food. Now suddenly, <laughs> when the, the habit has instilled and it has, it has been installed in the child's software. Yeah. This is so much bloody change of opinions. You know, you're giving me like back-to-back examples, which is like an everyday story. Yes. Indeed it is. And we've all done that. It's not that I'm saying that you're doing it or she's yeah. doing it. Even I've done it. Yes. We're all doing it. And we are changing. We are changing colors because we are confused. And then we are telling the child that you're not fitting in. As for my expectations, hello. <laughs> who is the one who gave the gadget? What did the child already knew about the gadget? Mm-hmm. Maybe it, just an infant, you know, we are handing over the gadget because we want things to be quicker. And yeah, then you're and then we just the wanted some private money. time to cover up, you know, maybe finish our agendas, maybe home chores, whatever. Yeah. So the child has also become an agenda. <laughs> Raising up has become an agenda. Finishing off chores with the child. How about the feel behind it? How mm-hmm. about the experience about, you know, the love around it? Yeah. It's not that I'm saying that all of this will take 10 more times. It'll take the same time. But if you can... Just sprinkle some magic of love. If you can just Mm -hmm. add more feel to whatever time. If the father has less time, we are not talking about quantity hours. We're talking about the quality. Mm -hmm. Are you really there with your child? Are you giving your undivided self? Or you're just coming by in that time and becoming, oh my God, I'm not giving time to my kid. And then so you start suggesting things to the kids. And that's not the quality time. Yes, and as parents, I feel, uh, you know, in mindfulness, it, they also talk about, we talk about the fact that we are whole and complete. And are we actually presenting our complete journey, you know, the couple, the parents? Are we really presenting our complete picture? Are we showing the complete story in front of the child? Yeah. You know, we would, some families, they fight openly, but the couple isn't loving in front of the child or we so want to is, you're right i think it's about just showing the flavors if if the parents are loving hugging and kissing even that should be shown and if they're fighting that should be shown but only if the fight is seen yeah it's also the fight you know whether you're fighting inside the room with a closed door or you're fighting with an open door how open or how secretive are you about the very fact that there can be arguments you know, if there is anger, hmm. at the moment you are shutting the door, it's telling a lot about you. It's telling that you're, the very fact that you're shutting the door, you've put anger in a negative box. Hmm. You so it's something that you cannot to, express. That you, to hide, yeah. that you have to hide. You have to be angry behind closed doors. If hmm. we accept that this is an emotion and it is absolutely okay. Yeah. You know, and then... Uh, how are you presenting? If you want to party after office, you go out and you party. Yeah. Why can't we? Why can't we just be playful back home? Why do we have to be so serious every time? Why? Why can't we just do unparenting? You know what? Yeah. Can I play the silly at home? You yeah. know, I am overly dramatic, and I love to be kind of the the Fun mystical and enjoying. It's like if you're working hard, I want to party harder, and let that whatever you are, be so open enough to your kids and it's okay. You know, they, they're not going to get spoiled and even though get spoiled, it's, it's full of love. Also the mischief, yeah. you know, I feel that there's a lot of joy in mischief. Yes. Are, our children are becoming so serious. The mischief no. is supposed to stay and grow from them. Yeah. You know, why am I uh, the mischievous one in the house? <laughs> so, like if you can also pass on a little mischief, hmm. 
Yes. More children. Because... Let it be like a cool atmosphere, you know, like chill, you know, like let's be a party. So, you know, Priyamada, now that you're saying this, so when, you know, 16 years back when I was pregnant and I, you know, wanted to deliver the kid, I did a lot of, uh, so that time I didn't know much about, you know, how to be a good parent and there were a lot of books also. So I still remember I picked up one book by Robin Sharma. It was called as Family Wisdom. And that chapter is still with me. That chapter said it's to be a good parent. Okay, if you're looking at being a parent, first be the best version of yourself. Be that good person. And also one of the best tips, now that you're saying now that whatever you are showed, it was written 16 years back and I have read it that just be whatever you are, mm -hmm. just show it to your kid. Let it, okay. it's okay to cry before your kid. It's okay to show the kid that, you know what, today my day is hectic and yes, I'm not able to give you time. Today it's like, you know what, I am going to day off, let's chill you also don't do anything and it's okay to not finish whatever work you have. Let's take a day off because let that child know that you deserve to get a day off. It's not only mom and dad and you have to sit by the table and complete your work. Oh, the homework is done. Do some other study. So why the to-do list for the kids never get done? You know, so this this just reminded me of that book and um, beautiful, you know, it is mm -hmm. such a beautiful thought. Yes. So Priyamada, what is it? You know, it's like, as we all know that mindfulness is not only for teenagers. Sometimes I think mindfulness for teenagers is has to be first the mindfulness to the parents because we all need it. It's not only parents, but as humans, we all need it. And I think it comes with a lot of practice. So what is it? What is your take on this? And see, as we said, there's no conclusion. Okay, there cannot be any conclusions. You and me sitting here, we're just sharing experiences and we're just talking openly and gossiping about this. But what is it that you would like to, okay, um, yes, suggest as a coach, being a mindfulness coach, what is it that, what is your motto behind this? And what is it you would like to follow or you would like to help parents understand this? So take life as it comes. Uh, be with the flow. Live your present moment. Mm -hmm. Don't really, don't really think that this was the story a few years back. Where am I heading towards? If we can just take today as today. Wow. You know, if I don't see that the next year will bring something to me and then I would be complete or my child will attain an exposition and then he would be, you know, where he should be. Mm -hmm. If we can just look at where he is right now and not how far he has come or how far he has to go. If he's, if we can just appreciate where he is right now mm -hmm. and not really think that he's incomplete right now, when he acquires an exposition, then he will be good enough. Wow. If we can really see the child where he is, is whole and complete. True. And I think it's just about letting know all the teen teenagers is like, you are enough. Yes. Yeah. And this bit is, of course, what I'm saying from a mindfulness perspective. As, as a parent, I'd like to suggest that whatever said and done, don't make your child's life so easy. By giving him everything laid yeah. on a platter. Because if you make it so easy today, you're going to make it really hard for him tomorrow. True. Don't pamper or overprotect and don't overdo the ingredient of love as well. You know, we talked about one side of the coin where we're talking about being with the child, love, trust. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, don't make your child, you know, so protective as a project that, you know, the watermelon will fall then the you know, the whole show will get spoiled and the watermelon, you know, had to be sold in the market and, oh, let me protect the watermelon from falling. Yeah. So don't overdo it. Don't just, you know, the child has come up, you know, the child wakes up in the morning and says, oh, I had a project to be submitted and I haven't done anything about it. And you're like, that's okay. And you're opening your cupboard and, you know, you, you kind of quickly taking out your scissors and, um, just, you know, doing the project for him. Yeah. If you do it, then sorry. So on a smaller scale, let the child True. Fail. True. And they should know that this is necessary for them. It's it's their work. So I think, as you said, love is also empowering. You know, it has to empower them. 
as you said, let it not be overprotective, but empower them that this is your life. You're growing up. If you understand everything, take care of your life. Take care what is necessary to do for your life. Do that, yeah. How wonderfully summed up. Yeah. Thank you. But thank you so much, Priyamada. Thank you for, you know, being here. And uh, I truly, you know, I have truly uh, liked and admired you for what you are. Because I think wherever sessions we have been together, I truly love what you talk about mindfulness, about parenting. And uh, I really cherish your words. So thank you so much for, you know, being here. And... Veda, I am the one who is going richer today. Really, <laughs> I am taking so many wow, uh, experiences you. from you and you're a vibrant personality and you're into health and fitness and mindset coaching and mindfulness. There's so much that you're doing and you're doing it really from the heart, you know, because I see you getting vibrant from inside. Every day I meet you, you're looking more charming, beautiful, blossoming. So I, I think know. that's that's your good work showing up. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you so much because right now, believe me, it's like I'm feeling so good. Thank you so much for saying such beautiful words. But Believe me, it's you and me. It's about, I think every time we reflect what we see. So right now this energy or this vibrant energy is coming from you as well. So it's like a lot of give and take right now. Mm. And <laughs> I'm really enjoying talking to you right now. And I'm sure this is not the last video um, that I'll, I'll be inviting you on Masterful TV, but I'm going to invite you so many more times. And there are so many different topics that we can always come together and talk about it. As Rumi says, the beauty <laughs> you see in me is a reflection of you. Yes. So if we could also transpire that to you know our children, they are your reflection. True. And the beauty you see in them is a reflection of you. So please see the beauty in them. Please see the light in them. They are wondrous beings and they're a part of you. So if you could cultivate the things that are already within them, build up from what they are, accept them who they are, yeah. see them as it is and then nourish them with love yes, and i think we all are unique we all are unique in our own way priyamada so well said so so beautifully whatever you said right now just gave me goosebumps so wow it's so cold here in delhi i'm anyway <laughs> having goosebumps, goosebumps for being cold <laughs> So lovely connecting, uh, you know, from distant locations. And this was so fantastic. Thank so you. fascinating to talk. And the gossip was wonderful. wonderful. Let's do let's this. What again. a beautiful gossip. Yes. Thank you so much, Priyamada. Thank you Thank for your you. time. Bye.